Thank you for all the comments on the last video about this machine. I wanted to address a couple of them before we started. First, I realized I didn't actually mention what I'm actually trying to build. Well, the initial plan was actually having something that was rotating that you can fit so many tape heads around, but the audio gets recorded in here onto this drum, then gets spun around and is read by these outputs, which are then mixed into it. It's sort of like, you know, Frero Jacca, Frero Jacca, Domevu, and they're still going Frero Jacca. You know, when you're singing in rounds and there's a delay. In essence, that's what the delay is. It's got memory and it remembers the past and it just keeps on bringing it back up again and again and again. Anyway, in the last video, I said this. Oh, and not to mention an upgrade from the last copy, 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 copy cat is a separate jack output for each of the tape breed heads. Meaning if you really wanted to, you could plug a separate speaker into each of them and then put them around your head or something. That's right. Each of the tape heads has a separate output that we could potentially wire into a speaker that possibly rotates around your head so that disc can be your head. Do you like the idea? So we need to make something that can go around your head. I'm in an orange still. I cannot decide whether to build it around a helmet so you've got a helmet with speakers around it or into a lampshade. I don't know yet. I don't know which one to do. Now the thinking is, it's the helmet, it's kind of cool, it'll look quite funny. You've got a frame around it with speakers and you could go around, you can in essence play the guitar and you can just be, you know, you could be your own, own audience. But then I was thinking, wait a second, that is gonna be easily broken at the museum. We may as well make it a permanent device. And that's when I looked up in the ceiling and remembered I've got this. This completely simplifies the whole thing because you don't need to build a frame. All you need to do is drill holes and pop speakers in. And the other thing about this is, it might have a little bit of an effect into the sound because it makes a bit of a funky, you know, chamber. Ooh. But then after coming up with this, I was plagued with, oh no, but the thumbnail won't look as obvious. So I just, I'm still, I'm in an R in. Do I go for the lampshade? Oh, actually that does look quite good. Or do I go for a weird metal frame around a helmet? Oh, I don't know. I just don't know. Oh, I'm going to flip a coin. I'm going to flip a coin. Going to flip a coin. Heads, helmet, tails, lampshade. We've got tails, one, so best of three. Tails, okay, it's lampshade. It might worry some people how many of my life decisions are actually based on coin tosses. So yeah, this lampshade is pretty nice. It's one of those blooming things you see on one of those dodgy TV programs like hunting in old houses and things going, oh, this could be worth a lot. You're probably gonna be horrified when I drill a bunch of holes in it, but in reality, it's, it is literally a crappy old industrial lampshade. So I don't give a monkeys. I'm gonna give it a clean first. It's just amazing how much crud. It's collected. Gonna need a lot more cleaning. There we go, nice and clean. So what's the plan? Well, it's very simple, actually. We're going to just put eight speakers around its perimeter. Gotta be honest, when I ordered these speakers, I did think they were gonna be a little bit bigger, but hey ho, what are you gonna do? It's a very simple concept. We basically just drill eight holes equidistant around here. I'm thinking about this point. So it kind of like, they all meld together. And then directly bolt the speakers to the lampshade. So the lampshade also acts as a bit of a, a bit of a resonator. So it adds a bit more oomph to it. That'll be we're going to lose a lot of that with the holes that we're cutting and the stuff that we're bolting into it, but it's still going to be there. We could mount them on an internal frame, but then it doesn't look as cool from the outside with all the wires dangling. You've got to, there's a lot of pros and cons to everything right here. It's one of those times I wish I got a set of those hole cutters, but you yeah, know, this is what it is. So now we've got, we've got multiple holes around the outside. Cool. Right, so we should have holes nice and equidistant. There we go, definitely not the best tool for the job, but when you gotta get something done, you gotta get something done. Uh, oh, that's cool. Could even have it sticking outwards. I wonder what it'd be like then. Actually, no, no, keep it on the straight and narrow, Sam. Come on, come on, lad. You gotta keep on cracking. So yeah, we're gonna put it on the inside. This is a very straightforward build. So all we need to do is add a few more holes for mounting the speakers onto the lampshade using some M3 screws. So we're gonna drill those along and uh, keep on lining them up and then pop them in. There's eight in total. So that is quick math, 16, 32 bolts and 32 nylock nuts. Ooh, lovely. So this is us bolting them in. I, I was thinking my, maybe I should put some rubber suspenders. Rubber suspenders, that sounds a bit dodgy. On 
onto the speakers to be able to isolate them from the vibrations of the speaker and actually in hindsight I wish I did that I might do that later in a when we improve this build because we're actually going to add another eight speakers onto this machine a little later on anyway this is the wire that we're going to use it was left over from when we were wiring in the patch bays in the museum this wiring isn't technically made for this kind of stuff there it's made for patch bays and balanced XLR jacks wiring them into speakers any bigger might be a bit dodgy because you might not be able to pass enough current but these tiny little speakers will be perfectly fine with it so we bolt them into the lampshade fitting and poke the separate cables through some holes that are directly above a single speaker each of these cables have four wires in them in order to kind of double up the current I just used two wires on either side of the speaker so you got the plus side of the speaker and the minus side of the speaker when we add more speakers to this lampshade we may all split this apart and actually end up using all four to kind of wire in all of the other speakers as well so once we've finished wiring in all of the speakers into that we need to turn our attention over to the box that is gonna have all of the amplifiers in it so this is a completely random box but it seemed about the right size to be able to fit four of these in these are just simple stereo DIY amplifiers so each of them have two channels each so we can use four of them to make eight of the speakers work one left and one right we just kind of double up the usage so we bolt those into some mounting clips on the back and then pop the jack sockets on the back you can see how non straight I've drilled those holes just don't look too closely so these mono jacks are the inputs for all eight of the speakers so we're gonna wire all eight of these inputs into the inputs of each of the amplifiers left and right designated to either of them and then we also after finishing that need to wire in the power so this yellow cable connects the plus and minus to each of them and then that connects to the power socket uh, wired in parallel so they all turn on nicely the other side of the uh, cable loom is going to be going through this gland so we can bolt it up so it doesn't get all tugged and we wire all of them to the correlating outputs of the amplifier and that's basically it now we can shut it off and lock it because it's got a key for whatever reason Ooh. so here it is we've got the volume knobs under lock and key for whatever reason it's on a nice long cable i did think it would be cool having an electric winch to make it height adjustable that might still be on the cards because if you see here i did make the speakers a little bit too high up that was a little bit of an oversight but that's okay because in the next part we're going to be adding more tape heads to this so that means we're going to be able to stagger more speakers around the bottom edge so we're going to have 16 speakers in this overall first i'm not going to bolt it to the ceiling i'm literally just going to have it on my head as a helmet because it does a perfectly good job even though it does that a little bit oh my god actually that's pretty painful why is that painful oh my god maybe i will have it dangling just a cable tie for here because it's not permanent so i'll just have it dangling hey pop that there pop that there then we wire a loom in between the speaker connectors all right any old order and the other side we connect to the separate outputs might need to adjust the volumes Pretty cool like it actually works really well I mean I don't know how I'm gonna show you it I'm gonna set up a couple of mics next to me pointing there and just see where we get to this is the thing it's all about experimenting and just working out where to go next so I'm gonna have that one pointing that way this is the point I need one of those binaural heads isn't it right okay so let's give it a go let's press record
Oh, that is really cool. It needs bigger speakers, that is for sure. This thing needs to be bigger and not enclosed in a lampshade. I need to make the steel bar version. I've realised with all of the experiments thus far, it's only the wet signal you're hearing. When I'm playing a note, you're literally hearing it being recorded onto the tape and then a few milliseconds later being played out the first tape head. Here's just a quick experiment that I did right at the end with the microphones going up but also a dry signal coming in. And you gotta get to hear it's more of a ethereal sound. <laughs> Right now there is quite a bit of warble um, that is down to I think all the tracking's gone a bit weird the flexibility of the panel and stuff so I'm putting an aluminium panel on the front in the next video adding an extra rack for some more knobs and more circuitry including feedback and things like that but much like this time and the last time amongst a load of other projects I've been putting up bits and bobs as I've been building it over on Patreon so, you, so if you want to see all of this stuff including the building the conception of the plan and also the recordings in more depth and more length and things like that then that's that's all available over on Patreon. But also, I've recorded more sampler instruments that you could download over there to be able to play to your heart's content. A couple of them are using this, and then there's a few more of them using the Cosmo synthesizer. So if you're interested in trying to play this or this on like an iPad or on Logic or Ableton or something, you can use the standalone slash VST decent sampler and play the instruments that I've made for that. They're all available over on Patreon. Anyway, let us know what you think. And if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe. And remember, don't be scared to try them. Maybe don't make a lampshade with speakers. I'm not sure. It's pretty it's cool. It's cool. Shout out to Heimbach on showing us this uh, decent sampler by Dave Hollowitz. It's Shout out to Dave as well. Uh, it's uh, really cool. So it's a basically a VST or a standalone plugin for like making sample libraries and recording them and sharing them. And it's actually really quite easy to do. And I turned out that you can get the Cosmo synth. This is my synthesizer. Like. <laughs> Slightly different sound to what I'm about to show you, but I've managed to make a sample, few sample libraries of things like that. And then it's like playing that, but on, on one of these dirty things. I don't know what they're called, uh, computers. I mean, you can sort of hear it's samples, but it's, 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 it's old oh, technology. Massive blood right here, but it is what it is. But in other videos, over the last month or so, I've been recording a couple of these for the different videos. For instance, the Bon Tempe guitar. Look. It's, or the 24 hour soldier of Fond. So yeah, I 
I thought you should know, I'm going to be making more as time goes on. I'm making them available on Patreon. So if you want to get older or any of these, then go and check it out over there. And uh, we're going to have a lovely time. Totally do. <laughs> Also, the thing that I think is cool and you might think is rubbish is Cosmo on the extremities of the notes goes out slightly out of tune, so right high at the top. It's got tracking issues. The samples have the same tracking issues. I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's good, but yeah.